Welcome back, everybody. Last time we left off scratching our heads on what to do with this dang dashboard. But here we are, two orange sodas later, and we're still dead set on ripping everything out. Throughout the years, the dash has been pulverized with base demos, so it's bound to get pretty interesting trying to remove it all in one piece, especially since we added so much extra glue and adhesive just trying to keep it all together. By now, you're probably asking yourself, what is this guy doing? Why on earth don't we just remove the whole thing at once, in one piece, like a gosh dang professional? Well, that'd be fine and dandy if things weren't stuck in like 10 different areas with foam. Lots of foam. And silicone. Probably more than Southern California. But what I'm trying to say is that we need to attack the beast from the side before we can gradually break her loose. So let's go over to the A-pillars and see if we can free up a little bit of extra room. Tweeters are out and the corners of the dash are looking naked. Well, naked enough to see how crazy we went with silicone. Holy crap, it's like a scene from Nip Tuck over here. I'm glad we're taking her in for surgery. But unfortunately, behind those pillars, we noticed that the tint was coming off our windshield. So lo and behold, we'll have to rip that out too. Ridiculous, there's gotta be like a hundred bolts holding this stinking thing together. Everywhere you turn, oh look, there's more. Absolutely ridiculous. So what I'm slowly starting to realize is that the parts keep flying, but the panels stay stuck. So I wouldn't doubt if we'll have to ramp up the Hulkification level here a little bit. broke your elbow. Oh no, not the windshield. I know what you're thinking. What a stupid way for this thing to die. And I'm right there with you. If it wasn't for the panels being so stuck with all the adhesives, I'm sure it would have gone a heck of a lot smoother. But since it's all said and done, we can't really do anything about it. So we'll have to ramp up the energy a little bit and just go to town. Get this thing out of there. What do you say? Now that's what we've been looking for. Foam, foam, foam. Now that we have access to it, we can go ahead and start scrounging and getting it out of there so the panels loosen up a little bit. And it's making sense why things weren't budging now in the first place, huh? So let's go ahead and get down and dirty and I will come back to you guys a little bit after we fast forward getting the foam out of there for the last piece, the biggest piece. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Massive thanks to our friends at the Amp Lab for supporting the EXO channels. If you've got a busted amp that needs repairs or just looking to buy new and used gear, be sure to check out the Amp Lab. Troy and Ethan are bound to have lots of sales this holiday season. Follow the links below. Now let's get back into it. Oh 
Mike Gush. We've got a fully ripped out dashboard in the truck and a broken windshield in our hearts. Oh, you'll always be remembered. It sucks she had to go out like that in a blaze of glory, but what do we expect? We loaded up like two cans of great stuff in the dashboard, so it was bound to stick in a couple places. So we'll just have to roll with the punches, just like the next step here, taking out the heater core and blower system. Now, before you get going crazy with that, decision I'm making. It's already been non-functional for like six years on the AC side and three years on the heater side. So what's the point of having this big chunky monkey just taking up all this space and being the sole thing that's preventing us from making this thing a sealed off tank? Of course, there's holes coming in and out for the parts inside this thing. So we're going to take it out, seal it off and make this thing strong. So in order to do that, we need to get a couple parts from the hardware store that I don't have. So we'll, you know, keep our, you know, workstation clean by moving on to something else, taking out the LED controllers, our door poppers, and some other stuff that managed to weasel its way back down here as we tried to remove all this mess. So before we get tackling this big bad boy right here, let's uh, get, take care of all this stuff first because this will probably have to be in the next video. I need to do some research on properly deleting the heater core and AC system. But let's go ahead and take care of this stuff, shall we? Here's our sensor, right out in the open, easy for us to get it. It is aimed through one of these holes right here, pointed directly at the voice coil. Now that's how we get a nice reliable temperature reading on those nice hot bass demos. So we'll take the VCI and pry it right out of its little adapter here. And as you can see, right there is the surface mount sensor, which is the uh, trick of the trade. That's how we get the temperature reading right there. Now we can go ahead and take it right out and fish it out of the box, which we have a little bit of a uh, hot glue holding things together down here in the corner. And I guess since we're in here, we can go ahead and take out the LEDs, which are just uh, more or less uh, held up on the side of the wall with some hot glue as well. But we have it going up and around all the way. Then we have this tape here, which allows it to have that like invisible look. When you look through the port, you can't actually see the lights. So we'll go ahead and take all this off and uh, this will be recycled for the new wall. But obviously we're gonna be doing a bigger shell. So all this needs to go. Everything that was on the floor is pretty much picked up, except for a couple wires here, which are going to our door panels, housing our speakers. Now that's gonna be saved for the next video, which we're gonna tackle our mids and highs amplifiers on the left, and both right and left door pods. So that's gonna be something nice, and we're actually preparing here with some uh, pricing on that little loopy doopy that we're gonna need for uh, making sure that we don't have any leaking fluids uh, deleting the heater core. So there, you know, it's a lot of $11.95 for that little tubing. So we're gonna get that going here uh, for the next big process. But in the meantime, we can at least get some more stuff done and uh, pump out a couple more videos for you guys in the meantime. Now, as you can tell, I'm freaking tired here and something pretty funny happened uh, while editing this video. Uh, one of these nights, I actually went and called it a night, went to bed, and then came back evidently and started working on the truck and the only way I knew that is because if you were paying attention in this video all of a sudden I was wearing pajama pants uh, from my work pants so I, I must have like gotten some sudden motivation and come back out and done 
uh, some more work. And really my go-to inspiration for this is uh, Rutherford Clippo. He, you know, he did something really, really strong. And I'm gonna try to do something like that. And I don't even care if it bumps me up into big dog classes. I've been in that situation for years with my van and even this truck because of the roof. And uh, yeah, much more to come. So stay tuned for this, guys. I gotta still figure out the whole you know, process of editing. So thanks for sticking around. All right, I'll talk to you in the next one. Wah!